air 92 769 WRRV music all morning. All right, let's uh, let's go to the phones because I believe I believe the uh, person I've been waiting to speak to all morning long is on the phone. Let's go uh, right to line two. Hello. Hi, this is Garrett Oliver from Brooklyn Brewery. Garrett Oliver, good morning. How are you? I'm great. Now that I'm talking I, to you, I am sorry. I, I, I realize only now that uh, we were at uh, we were supposed to be at uh, at eight forty, not nine forty, and uh, that's my uh, my bad. Garrett, you can do whatever you want. You are a god in my eyes. You are my <laughs> idol. You are my hero. You are best. I'm not quite sure about that. <laughs> you could call me at three o'clock in the morning. I'd be happy to talk to you then. <laughs> First of all, let me tell you uh, how much of an honor it is talking to you. Uh, your uh, your book, The Brewmaster's Table, changed my life. Well, it's, all, it's a very nice thing to hear. You know, it's a, you know, it's the sort of thing that uh, I'm very glad that people who are already into beer seem to really enjoy the book. But it's been really more important to me that people who maybe were at the outset of a journey, you know, with beer, an enjoyable journey with beer through life, found the book, uh, you know, a useful guidepost. Well, I use it as a crusade tool to try to uh, recruit others. <laughs> The, the, the heathens shall be saved. Yeah, well, and, they, and you're uh, you're using the book to save them. Speaking of heathens, my uh, co-host Brandy here is a, uh, is a wine nut. Good morning. She's a wine snob. And I'm not a snob. I, I have arguments with her all the time because uh, we that's, talk about. That's, that's okay. I'm a wine snob. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I keep telling her that for any kind of food you can imagine, there's a beer to go with it. I, I think that that beer actually is a lot more. Uh, it's more versatile. I think that. And I am, you know, I'm enough of a wine geek that, uh, uh, you know, I had Frank Cornelison over to my house uh, uh, recently. Uh, half my friends own wine shops. I can actually get into fairly arcane arguments. But the range of flavors in wine, there's only one ingredient, you know, and uh, you have a relatively narrow range of flavors as complex as wine gets. So if you really take the very lightest vino verde you ever had mm -hmm. and go all the way to the other end, some sort of 17% big bludgeoning California Zinfandel, right. you still don't get the range of flavor that you get even from whipped beer to imperial stout. That's what I've been trying to tell Brandy for, uh, for days and days. However, you said it much more eloquently yeah, than I did. and I somehow <laughs> believe you more. What, now, what if I throw a few uh, dishes at you and, and you tell me what kind of beer you would pair with it? Sure. You up for that? Yeah. All right, all right here we go. Pulled pork. Oh, pulled pork's pretty easy. I mean, dunkel is the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, anything that's really rich, you know, rich and malty um, uh, works really well. The other thing that works really well is all sorts of, uh, uh, of smoked beers. So uh, for fairly obvious reasons, even if the, if the pork itself hasn't been smoked, when you add something like, say, Alaskan smoked porter or any of the other uh, uh, smoked porters that are so widely available now, you get that smoky character going through the nutty flavor of the pork. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Can I tell you, I'm, I'm aroused right now, listening to you. <laughs> just oh, so you know. Wait until you, get your, wait until you get your smoke porter. It's a little early. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bacon and eggs. What what beer would you uh, drink with bacon and eggs? Well, generally speaking, I mean, I like uh, I like rice beer. Actually, works really well because you know not only do you have the sort of you know fruitiness, you have enough uh, uh, because of the carbonation, you've got enough cutting power to kind of work with the eggs. Always a big complaint with uh, with the wine people that uh, eggs are mouth coating and they have sulfur compounds that seem to ruin wine. I could I could talk to Garrett forever <laughs> forever about this stuff, but uh, you know we do have this uh, beer of the week program that we've been doing here at WRV, trying to get the listeners to explore different types of beer, uh, get a taste for the different styles that are out there, and we're honored this week actually to have the uh, Brooklyn Winter Ale as our uh, beer of the week. Now, this is really isn't like a, a regular traditional winter ale. There's not a lot of spices and cloves and all that uh, weird stuff in there. This is a straight-ahead uh, beer. It's, it's more like a, a Scottish ale, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I've done uh, in the past a number of types of uh, winter beers that follow that kind of spiced wassail uh, 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 tradition. And, you know, I got to a point where it's not that I don't like spices in beer. You know, we've used plenty. But uh, I thought it would be nice to have something that was just warm, round, rich, and I thought of, like, where is really, really cold that has a tradition of, uh, 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 a tradition of beers that seems to fit? And, yes, yeah, Scotland came very much to mind <laughs> as a place with a particularly bleak winter, uh, uh, beautiful as it is. And the Scottish ales are generally fermented a little bit colder uh, than, uh, uh, than the English ales further north. You know, they're, so there's something almost lagerish in the way that uh, uh, that they're made. So they have some fruity character. They tend to leave a little bit of residual sugar behind. And when you look at across the board what uh, our winter foods are about, 
a little bit of roast, some caramel, and some residual sweetness. You know, works well with a lot of the stuff that we eat in wintertime. Yeah, and as I put up on the website, I've been enjoying mine with a big plate of Christmas cookies. That'll work. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, and you know, Scottish shortbread cookies actually uh, work tremendously well with uh, with with that beer and uh, and even with us. Uh, other sort of scotch ales and barley wines. Yeah. Not now, too much sugar in them, but plenty of butter. <laughs> now, I know uh, today Halftime is doing a uh, Brooklyn tasting, so if you head on down there, 5.30 uh, today it yep. starts. Uh, you can go and try some of these delicious beers that uh, G- Garrett is uh, responsible for. I want to thank you so much for calling us this morning, Garrett. This, this has been like the highlight of my radio career talking to you, seriously. <laughs> Well, I hope that you go on to greater highlights than this, but uh, it's been great talking to you as well. No, it doesn't get better Enjoy than your this. holidays. <laughs> you too. Happy holidays, Garrett. Thanks a lot. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. There you go. He's a nice guy. Very nice guy. I like. I could continue to talk to him. I mean, he definitely geeks out to the extent that I geek out about wine, about beer. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, our listeners' eyes didn't glaze over during that. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. So uh, there you go. The guys, uh, the guys, like a uh, brewing genius. Uh, get down to halftime today and try yeah. uh, just a, a couple of his beers if you can. Definitely. I mean, it's a great opportunity for you to try them. I didn't even get a chance to discuss the black chocolate stout <gasps> with him, like my favorite beer of oh all my time. Gosh. Call him yeah. back. Um. Well, I have his number now, so I'll call him up later on today. I'll have, oh. a, pri- I'll have a private conversation <laughs> oh, with him later on poor today. Poor Garrett. The good, poor guy. He's never going to be rid of you now. Bang, Forrest again! Let's talk like, about the chocolate stout! Oh, what? Click.